So here we're looking for the area between two curves. Okay, so we're going to start by graphing them. We're doing the sketch part first, and then we will slice and integrate. Okay, y equals x to the fourth looks uh, very similar to y equals x squared. It's just a little bit flatter. Okay, it's not a full w because there's no other terms in here. Um, but in between zero and er, in between negative one and positive one, this uh, a, a, a number um, raised to the fourth power stays closer to zero. So it kind of hugs the x-axis a little bit longer, but then passes through the point one one and then shoots up um, much more quickly. So uh, as the exponent increases on an if it's even, so like x to the fourth, six, eighth, etc., it just keeps looking flatter and flatter, uh, but it's still kind of the same shape as a parabola. So something kind of like this. Okay, so that could be y equals x to the fourth. And then this one right here is a parabola. It's opening downward. I can factor and pretty quickly see that my x-intercepts are at zero and at two. Okay. So parabola opening downward, something like that. Okay, um, probably not exactly where the intersection happens or anything, but that's okay for now. Um, I do have the area in between them, and I can draw a representative slice, okay? That rectangle could, wherever I draw it, would have the same uh, height, okay, in terms of the functions. Um, so... Let me draw my little slice over to the side here. The height of this is the top curve minus the bottom curve. Sorry, that's not a very smooth curve. Okay. Top curve minus the bottom curve, which is the parabola. This one minus the quartic function. So this is 2x minus x squared minus x to the fourth is the height. And then the thickness here is dx. Okay, so that's that tiny horizontal change. Um, and so this tells me that into my integral, I'm going to have the difference between the function. So 2x minus x squared minus x to the fourth dx. Um, and I do need to know what the intersection points are so I can get my a and b, my endpoints of the interval. Uh, for the limits. So I know I'm starting at zero and I need to figure out what this intersection point is. You might be tempted to set these two things equal to each other and try and solve that. X to the fourth equals 2x minus x squared. Um, but then you also would figure out pretty quickly that that would be gross to try and do by hand. Okay, so then hopefully you would then be tempted to say, hmm, how could I do this more smartly? Maybe since this is a non-calculator problem, I should guess and check. And then you might think, what would be a decent thing to guess that's a nice number in between 0 and 2? And then you might think, how about 1? And so then you might plug 1 in, and you would get a point at 1, 1 on this function, and 2 minus 1 is also 1, and you would say, hey, that intersection is the point 1, 1, which technically should be the vertex of this parabola, but it's not, and that's okay. Doesn't really matter if the graph is perfect or not, as long as we can find the intersection. So um, this intersection point right here is at x equals 1, which we found with a quick guess and check. And then from here, you would integrate and get a number, and I don't know what it is. Okay. One more. Here we have the, uh, the area. We're looking for the area between the curves y squared equals 4x and 4x minus 3y equals 4. Okay, y squared equals 4x is a parabola, but it is a sideways opening parabola. It opens to the right. Okay, so something like this. So this is y squared equals 4x. And then 4x minus 3y is linear. Um, resist the urge to put it into slope-intercept form and try and find the y-intercept. Use, use the standard form and... Um, and some easy values, okay? So I know that if y is 0, this has a point at 1, 0, okay? So we'll call that 1. And then I also know the slope in standard form is the opposite of a over b, so the slope here is 4 thirds, <coughs> excuse me, which is a little bit steeper than 1, so something like that, okay? So there is my, um, there's my graph, there's the region bounded between the two. So this is 4x minus 3y equals 4. Okay. All right. Um, and then we need to slice. Okay. And our first instinct is probably to do something like this. Okay. And say there's our rectangle, but 
here our first instinct is a problem, okay? Um, one, it's a little bit inconvenient because the top of my curve is not in terms of y. I'm going to call this f and I'm going to call this g, okay? I know I'm going to need f minus g for the height, but the problem is I would have to, not a problem, we'll say an obstacle would be that I would have to write this, uh, I would have to solve both of these for y, okay? So this is going to be, uh, really I would have y equals plus or minus root 4x, so plus or minus 2 root x, um, but here this is just the top half of that, and then over here I could solve for y and it would have some fraction in there and I don't really want to do that, but I could if I needed to. The problem though is that while that label works as the height for that rectangle or that rectangle or that rectangle or even this rectangle, it does not work for this rectangle over here or any of the rectangles over here because the height of this rectangle is not defined as the curve minus the line, okay? It's not defined as curve F minus curve G, all right? So because this curve in the way that, or this rectangle and the way that we've labeled it is not representative of the entire function or of the entire region, sorry, we cannot use that rectangle, okay? So instead, we need to try something else. Let's see if I can do this carefully. There we go, okay? And that something else is that we are going to uh, turn the rectangle sideways, okay? We're gonna slice this way because here, no matter where we slice, it doesn't matter if we're above or below the x-axis, anywhere in this region, the width or the length this way, horizontally, of that rectangle is going to be line minus curve, 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 okay? In other words, we can label it with the same thing over the entire region. Okay, so here we need the line minus curve. Now, if we are doing these horizontally, these are horizontal changes, meaning x-coordinate. Chord. X-coordinate is horizontal changes, so we need to know what, what x is in terms of y. Okay, so we are going to do a little bit of algebra here, so can't get away from all of it. So here, this function we could write as, or this equation we could write as x squared over x equals y squared over 4, and then this one right here is going to be x equals 4 plus 3y over 4, which is 1 plus 3 fourths y, okay? So we want the furthest to the right, the bigger number, this is a bigger x-coordinate than this x-coordinate, okay? So bigger minus smaller, otherwise we'd have a negative, so line minus curve is 1 plus 3 fourths y minus and then the curve is y squared over 4, okay? And then the thickness of this, or in other words, the height of this rectangle, is no longer dx, okay? Now the thickness of this is dy. And that's actually good because if we're writing an integral in terms of y, we need to integrate with respect to the variable y. So these variables do need to match. As soon as we decide that we're slicing horizontally, then that means the thickness of one rectangle is going to be dy, and then everything else needs to be in terms of y as well. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so for our area, we are going to integrate this, 1 plus 3 fourths y minus y squared over 4 times dy, and we do need to figure out what the limits are by finding the intersection points. Um, the easiest way to find this intersection is to say, hey, there's a 4x and a 4x. Let's replace that 4x with a y squared. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and do it. So we get y squared minus 3y. I'll subtract 4 from both sides. Set this equal to 0 because uh, we subtracted 4. So we get y minus 4 times y minus 1. So, oops, sorry, y plus 1. So y equals 4 and negative 1. Okay. So the y-coordinate here is negative 1. The y-coordinate up here is 4. We're integrating from negative 1 to 4. And we know how to integrate that. And again, I'm not sure what the number is. Um, let's see, real quick here. If we are integrating in terms of the variable y or with respect to y, the limits also need to be in terms of y. Okay, I don't remember if I said that fourth hour. So fourth hour, hopefully you're watching this too. Okay.